I made a lot of videos on the topic of saving money where I dive deep on the topic. I give examples and I give my stories all while I tell you how important it is to save money. But what I think a lot of people forget is saving money won't save you. A while ago, I made a video called The Problem With Saving Money, which was more focused on the fact that it takes so long to save money and how we honestly feel like what we're saving is enough all for a pandemic to come and stop most of us dead in our tracks. But this video is a little different. It goes way more in depth. And I made this video to show you that there's more options out there other than just saving money. And if you're anything like me, you probably never even thought of them. So in this video, I'm gonna open your mind to other possibilities that can get you to where you wanna go a lot faster. And I'll show you exactly how to get started with these other options. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Reggie Bryans and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money, make more money, all while bettering yourself every single day. Let's get into this video. So in my video called The Problem With Saving Money, I spoke on two very big issues with saving money. For one, the time it takes to save money doesn't add up to how long the money will last. And two, the fact that it's recommended to everyone around the world to start their emergency fund with $1,000 or to have three to six months worth of expenses in their savings account are flawed pieces of advice. The first reason why saving money won't save you is because both of those statements I made are true. We all live in different areas with different costs of living. So $1,000 to you might be worth $100 in a state like New York or California. So it's not a one size fits all type of deal. I won't go too deep into that because again, I have an entire video on that side of saving money, but today I wanna to talk to you about the future of your money. Not only is saving money a great thing, but it's a simple habit that you can do right now to get ahead financially later. Cool, now it's time for the next step. And that next step is getting prepared for your ultimate financial goals that you have for your future. And I encourage you to think about this even while you're building up your emergency fund and your other savings accounts. Like for me, I knew when I was saving my first $20,000, I knew my next goal was to make a few hundred dollars extra in passive income every month in addition to what I was making at work. And it was simply because I wanted a few extra hundred dollars a month to pay off my student loan debt faster. The number I had in my head was $400 a month. So the way I had it planned out was I would have $200 go towards my savings and 200 extra dollars going towards my debt in addition to the minimum payment. And the plan was once I got the extra $400 a month was to keep increasing it so I could get out of debt faster and build my savings faster. That creates a world where the ball is in my court and I don't have to wait on a paycheck every two weeks. That meant I was creating opportunities for myself to make more money without relying on a random opportunity to just come out of nowhere and find me. Cause that happens. So in that case, I was saving money with the goal in mind. I knew my emergency fund would be just for emergencies. I knew my savings account would be something I absolutely would not touch unless I really had to or if my family needed something. I also knew the money that I was making from work wasn't coming fast enough, so I had to realize that there's other avenues that I could take, which I'm about to go over in just a second, and these avenues took my finances to the next level. Passive income was number one for me. This is something I've been working on for a while and it actually turns a lot of people off at first because the type of passive income I'm generating now required so much of my time and attention up front with absolutely no guarantees of paying me, ever. You won't have to go through what I did though. So let me rewind a little bit so I can break this down for you. I didn't know what passive income was at first, so if you are someone who doesn't know what that is, it's basically income that comes to you no matter what. Whether you're sleeping, eating, swimming, whether you're sick, or whether you're on vacation, that money is hitting your bank account. And it's because you put the work in up front to create a literal money machine. That's the most valuable form of income you can ever have because it comes regardless, which means that can save you. The way I always thought about it is, if I lost my job or if I got hurt or something and my income somehow got cut, at least I know that my passive income is still hitting my bank account. So once I finally started earning passive income, I started breathing a lot easier and it gives you a whole different sense of confidence and security. And here's a big point I wanna share with you real quick. A few months ago, I made a YouTube video that revealed how much money I made on YouTube last year. And I asked my viewers, if you were able to make an extra $400 a month every single month, what would you spend that money on? What would you do with it? Quite a few of you commented on that. And so Michelle and Mike both said that they would use that money and throw it straight towards debt. And I think that's a very good and resourceful way to use extra income. That's how you're supposed to use it. But something that really got my attention was what Diane said. She said she would use the extra money and put it into her investments. And something that these three have in common is they have a specific goal and purpose with that extra money that they're gonna get. It's just like with any extra money you get, whether it's a bonus at work or a stimulus check, you already have your mind set on where that money's going. So why is it that when it comes to saving, that same amount of intention and purpose doesn't go into it? It's good to have a cushion of savings and I think we should continue to save as we increase our income. But I also think if there's no intentionality with the money you're saving, you could miss out on a lot of opportunities to have money in the future. Because this is exactly what will happen if you only focus on saving. Let's say you're saving $500 a month, which is $6,000 a year total. Sure, for the first few years, you're gonna wanna stack that up and put it in a place where you can easily get to it, like say a bank. 
But just like I said in my other video, you don't want to get stuck there because if you do, this is what's going to happen. You'll keep saving that $6,000 a year, which might go up as you get raises and promotions at work and so on and so forth. But check this out. I'll give you 10 years of that. Matter of fact, I'll give you a head start because I'm feeling generous today. Let's say that you're able to add $100 onto your savings every single year. So by the end of year one, you save $6,000. By the end of year two, you save another $6,100. By the end of year three, you save another $6,200. So you add those all together until you get all the way to year 10. That's $64,500 in your savings account, right? That's a hefty savings account. Sounds good, right? Now I'm going to show you what would happen if you invested that same $500 a month into the stock market, but this time you ain't going to get no head start. It's just $500 flat. We'll say your investments give you 10% returns every single year, and after this example, I'll show you exactly which investments give these types of returns. Are you ready for this? I'm about to put y'all on some free game, and the free game is called math. Man, let me grab my computer, show y'all something real quick. Now, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm drawing on my computer as I give you this amazing presentation. I came prepared today, so my laptop ain't about to die this time. Low key, my southern accent just came out. So anyways, what you're looking at right now, you're looking at the growth of $6,000 at 10% interest for a 10 year time period. So this is what I wanna show you guys. So if I were to put $6,000 into an investment account that gives 10% returns for 10 years, this is what it would look like if it just sat in there with no money getting added. This is what it would look like at the end of 10 years. That's what I'm outlining right now, right? Okay, cool. So we're gonna ignore that because we're gonna do a little more than that. We're gonna add $6,000 a year, but we're gonna do it in a very unique way. We're gonna do it at the end of every year because of the fact that we're contributing $500 to it every month. So at the end of the year, it's gonna be $6,000. Makes sense, right? So you'll see here, there's a year zero and there's a year one. This represents a 12 month time period. Now I know you probably already knew that, but I'm, I'm making this make more sense. So. That 6,000 done already gained $600 because it gained 10%, right? Makes sense. Cool. So we're gonna pretend this zero is actually not a zero, but it's the first year. So you've spent the whole year putting $500 into it. So it is now $6,600. That's the end of year one. Okay, so now we're going to the end of year two. So now it, it gained another uh, it gained another 10%. So that's $660 on top of that, which is $7,260. So now it's the end of year two. So you already added another $6,000 to that because the whole year you've been contributing $500 a month. If I'm going too fast, y'all let me know. Now keep in mind, this isn't perfect math. If it were perfect math, it would be broken down by like a daily basis type of thing, but we're not doing all of that here. This is just to prove a point. So by the end of year two, you have $6,000 added because you spent the whole year adding $500 a month to it, right? Okay, so then by the end of year three, what you've initially invested has already gained another 10%. So now it's at 700, uh, so now it's at 7,986 dollars. But this that you contributed last year, the 6,000 right here, that also gained interest. So now it's 6,600. And so you see the pattern from here, it's following these two right here. So it's just gonna keep following that pattern until we hit the end right here. But also since it's the end of year three, there's another $6,000 added. And then again, year four, this is gonna to go to 7260 because it gains some more interest. And this is gonna to go to 6600 because it gains some more interest. Don't roast me on my handwriting neither. And of course, since it's the end of another year, we're adding another $6,000 on. Hopefully it's starting to make sense if I didn't make sense at first. Sometimes I go over things way too fast. I don't even understand what I'm doing half the time. So now you look at that 7260 and that gained another 10%. So now it's 7986. And then this is 7260. And then this is 6,600. And then you add another 6,000. So you see it simply follows the same pattern. So if we're, if we're starting from year 10, because I'm about to write all that, you know what I'm saying? My hands get tired doing that mess. We're gonna go from year 10 right there. So from year 10, we see that it's gonna come starting from right here, since right here at year two, it started from right here because we waited till the end of year two to add another $6,000. So 12,862 plus I'm not gonna call this out, so I'm, I'm just gonna fast forward this or something. All right, so this is what the whole equation looks like. I'm a mathematician now. But anyways, you, you see, and this, is how you, and this is how you do a math check right here. So it's your 10, we're gonna count. So we have this 15 number right here. So one, I'm gonna put marks by it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. That's how you know you've done the math right. That's 10 years exactly. Now, as much as I'd love to put my sloppy handwriting on all of my screen, what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and type it up on my calculator on my phone. Now, of course, I'm not gonna bore you with all of this. I'm gonna definitely fast forward the math, but if you wanna math check me, you know what I'm saying? You can pause the video and do the math yourself, but we're gonna go here anyway, so. So by my math, I got $97,039 by the end of year 10. So you're looking at $64,500 compared to the $97,039. That's over a $30,000 difference. What could you do with an extra $30,000? The extra $30,000 can save you if you're in a financial hardship. And that's, remember, we didn't even add anything on. That was just a flat $500 a month. Now that was just a 10 year example. Imagine what would happen if it was a 20 year, 30 year example. Or imagine this, imagine if you started doing what I've been doing recently and started really putting in more money to my investments. But more importantly, think about investing in the right things that give you that 10% return that I was talking about. But here's the key. Here's something that a lot of us don't think about. What if they also paid you dividends? Like if the money you put in your investments grew on a consistent basis, like what I just showed you in that example where we had that $30,000 lead, what if you got paid just for owning them, which makes the money grow even more? See, that's that compound interest compounding on itself. Now, I'm not just talking about investing in any old stock. I'm specifically talking about two phenomenon called growth investing and dividend investing. Now, what I just went over with you was growth investing, where the stocks grow consistently over a period of time, which makes your money grow, which outpaces inflation. You know, so you're not looking sick when your bank account isn't growing at all, but the cost of everything around you is growing. Now, we're going to talk about something that most of us don't even think about, and it's actually really powerful dividend investing. It's actually not new, but every day I'm more and more surprised by the amount of people that don't know what it is. But I can't even flex low key because I didn't know what it was for a while. Ah. So before I show you my favorite stocks and investments that give you everything that I was just telling you about, I want to paint a vivid picture for you for how to get passive income and cash flow simply by investing in blue chip stocks that pay dividends. The best way for me to describe what a dividend is, is basically when a very large successful company like say Coca-Cola has way too much money, more money than they know what to do with. So they'll pay you a dividend just for owning a stock in that company and they'll do it just like this. I'll get back to Coca-Cola in a second, but let's say you own a McDonald's stock. This is exactly how they'll pay dividends. By the way, McDonald's is actually a really good dividend stock to own, just saying. So you own stocks in McDonald's, so McDonald's says, all right, we're gonna pay you $5.16 every single year for each share that you have with us. And that may not sound like a lot, but if you have 200 shares of McDonald's stocks, that's over $1,000 you're getting a year. And when you consider that most companies pay dividends every quarter, that's over $250 per quarter that you're getting just for having your money in a McDonald's stock. I really want to challenge you to think different about what you do with your money because companies like McDonald's and Coca-Cola, they pay out dividends. And you know what else? They complement each other. What main beverage company does McDonald's use? Coca-Cola. That's why you see beverages like Coke, Sprite, Dr. Pepper, and now Powerade because it's all under the umbrella of Coca-Cola. Like, Coca-Cola owns all of those. That's how you can start to get a good idea of where your money is going to, especially when you invest in stocks, because you get to see how they interact with one another from business to business. If I'm putting you to sleep, I'm about to wake you up. Here's something that you're going to want to know. So imagine putting your money into stocks that grow over time and pay dividends. Instead of having that extra $30,000 that we talked about earlier, that money can go way beyond that. But if you're just saving all of your money in the bank, then that limits you. For a lot of people, that $64,500 is a full year of income. So when that money's gone, that's, that's it. It's gone. So if another illness hits the entire world, if you get sick or if you ever just end up out of work, period, I want you to really sit down and think about the value of that $64,500 that it took you 10 years to save. Because remember, you're saving your money in a world that revolves around inflation. That money can leave you so much faster than you were able to save it. But what's unbeatable is your money growing and also giving you passive income over time. I'm going to go ahead and share a few options with you. And these are great if you want to get started with this. But I'll also let you in on what platforms I use to invest. And keep in mind, this is in addition to what I'm investing in my 401k. So of course, there's a bunch of individual stocks that you can invest in and get that 10% return that I was talking about. In a lot of cases, you can get a lot more. And that's what I do. But I'm only going to share the stocks that I have my money in right now so you can get a good idea. I can't remember all these, so I'm going to look down. But this this is in no order, by the way. You got Microsoft, Apple, Regions Financial, Visa, Bank of America, and McDonald's. By the way, those are all examples of stocks that grow well over time and pay dividends. So it's the best of both worlds. And by the way, each of these pay more than 10%. It's more like 20%. But if you're the same way I was, you probably don't want to go for the individual stocks at first because you feel like they're too risky. So if that's you, I got you. I've got two exchange traded funds for you to check out. But of course you'll want to do your own research. I'm just some guy on the internet and I'm definitely not an expert and I'm not showing you which stocks to pick or which investments to pick. I'm 
only showing you a few of your options and I'm showing you what those options can potentially do for you in the future. So the first one I wanna go over is VOO. And of course, my money is always gonna be where my mouth is. As you can see right here, I own some VOO. And what that is, is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. By the way, ETF is the abbreviation for exchange traded fund. Now what this is, is a bucket of stocks and it's heavily diversified. It basically tracks the stock market performance of the top 500 US companies. And that's just a fancy way of saying this is a safer investment that still gives you solid return. And BOO happens to be one of the highest performing ETFs. And by the way, they give you that 10% return that I've been talking about this whole video. So sometimes it might be easier to trust your money going into 500 and something companies compared to putting a big chunk of your money into just one company. By the way, for everything I just talked to you about, I have two platforms that I invest with. I use Weeble for individual stocks and ETFs and I use M1 Finance for my Roth IRA. And my Roth IRA pretty much has everything. It's like the most heavily diversified thing I've ever seen. You can check out my links to those in the description. M1 Finance gives you $30 to invest if you go through my link. And Weeble gives you two free stocks if you go through my link. Now, what I personally chose to do, I chose to invest in individual stocks and in ETFs to kind of get the best of both worlds. And the cool thing about ETFs are they can stand the test of time. I'll show you something on the screen right now. And I'm specifically talking about the ETFs that track the S&P 500, but you should look it up, man. Like the returns you get are so consistent and the economy can go through downturns, recessions, you name it, it can go through it. And you'll still see consistent returns coming from these types of funds. Just to put it into perspective, the value of VOO is more than tripled since its inception in 2010. Now, another thing I wanted to talk about was passive income because it's kind of what I wanted to make this whole video about anyways. So when you invest in a good amount of dividend stocks, you'll start to see some consistent dividends over time as you put more and more money into them. And you'll start to see small numbers at first, you know what I'm saying, $30 here becomes $300 there, and eventually you'll start to see thousands of dollars per year just by wisely choosing to put your money in dividend stocks. Now I'm gonna have to make a whole video on dividend investing because this video is already getting really long, but basically if you wanna make this investing as passive as possible, and you wanna put your money somewhere that you are extremely confident, this is the ETF you'll wanna check out, VYM, Vanguard's High Dividend Yield. This is another basket of stocks, but this one pays dividends very consistently. And again, I have this one too. And just off the top of my head, a few companies that are within this ETF were companies like Verizon, JP Morgan, Procter & Gamble, huge companies like that. By the way, there's like a total of 400 and something companies within this ETF. So this is a pretty inexpensive ETF. When you consider the fact that it costs $100, you're getting about $3 a year in dividends, a little under $3. Make that 10 shares, $30 a year. 100 shares, $300 a year. I'll make an entire video on dividend investing for those of you who actually care about that stuff. See, for me, I love passive income, so I nerd out over this stuff. I could really get lost in this. By the way, as you're waiting for my dividend investing video to come out, I actually made a whole video on how to invest for beginners video. You can check it out up here. If you're at a point in your life where you're not making very much money and you're not able to put away that much money, this is not the time to invest $500 a month. I will never even mention investing money you don't have. That goes against everything I believe in. Instead, that's the time for you to hold on to as much money as you possibly can so you can build yourself up, put yourself in a better position, become financially stable, and have that savings. This message is for the people who have saved so much and they just got to the point where they don't really know where to put their money and they feel like they've gotten complacent. Because when you invest, there's gotta be some form of excess income that you're putting into it, money that you can afford to lose. Because that's the only way that you can stay consistent with investing and that's the only way to make sure you don't lose your mind when you see one of your stocks lose value. Saving money won't save you. Neither will cutting expenses, neither will eating at home every single day of the year. Of course, those things can be helpful and they can help you slightly get ahead as the years go by. And I think everyone needs to go through that point in life to get that financial discipline and become pretty good with their money. But in the end, what's gonna save you is wealth. Money that makes money. Money that wakes up early while you're sleeping. Money that makes money for you while you're at work. And you simply can't build that if all you ever do is save. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe. My name is Reggie Bryant, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Stay cold.